Welcome to Abhipedia Mains 2016 question and answer discussion. The question for the day is what is the geopolitical tussle in Middle East and what are the spillover, spillover effects of this tussle on the uh, countries in the region as well as on India. So okay. would you uh, like to throw light on uh, the context of this question? See, I see this co uh, context in the post Cold War scenario, mm -hmm. which unfolded in the form of capitalist versus communist, mm -hmm. you know, regimes. So, in the post Cold War scenario, we've seen a proxy Cold War is always going on between the capitalist USA and the communist USSR. Although its ideological framework has changed in the economic setup, mm -hmm. but politically, I guess the agenda still continues to be communist in USSR mm -hmm. and Russia today. Yeah. So, uh, in the Middle East, especially in the Persian Gulf region, we see that oil uh, or we can say energy is one of the core reasons why always there comes up to fight. Mm -hmm. And in the first, it was a fight over political ideologies and in the second, now ongoing phase, it's more about capturing the energy resources mm -hmm. uh, by one country over the other. Mm -hmm. so in the preliminary phase, USA was dependent upon Middle East and West Asia for its oil supplies prior to it becoming self-dependent by mm. shale gas mm. and all this, you yes. know. Uh, so right now its dependency is reduced, so it is ever since uh, WTC attacks being more and more aggressive mm -hmm. uh, in this uh, particular region. So in uh, Middle East and especially in the Persian Gulf region, I see two major players. Mm -hmm. Iraq is one player, uh, Iran is one player and Syria is another player. Mm -hmm. So uh, these two countries, uh, one is one was supported by USA for a very long period of time. For example, Bashar al-Assad regime, yes. and uh, Iran regime was always uh, opposed by the USA for a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. So there has been a continuously, uh, you know, uh, kind of complexity created between this equation. And one more thing I see: that there has been an Arab Spring going on since 2011. Tunisia, you know, then followed on to too many other countries. So, jitne bhi wo oil for freedom wala ek group bana tha countries ka, aap mere khayal se zada uske baare mein better bata paenge. Ki wo jo ek proper regime chalta hai, ab wo ek tarah se chess ke pyade the, wo jo USA ne ek ek karke ukhar di, hai na? To abhi jo next pyada banne wala tha, wo Russia tha. To before the story could come out to Russia and any regime change or uh, you know uh, what we say reign of democracy wala challenge russia mein aata usse pehle hi unhone ukraine aur crimea crisis ke andar intervene karna shuru kiya yes. hai na aur apni position as it is secure kar li mm -hmm. abhi syria mein bhi jaise isis wala proportion build hona shuru hua mm -hmm. udhar bhi unhone intervene kiya aur apni position secure kar li yes. so ek tarah se uh, abhi bhi ek pseudo cold war jaari hai, mm -hmm. hai na yes. aur ise pseudo cold war ke andar middle east aur west asia pista rehta hai mm -hmm. hai na so tell me something about this, how can we link these perspectives together and how would it affect it? Sir, so the uh, Middle East region has a multitude of ethnic communities mm. and prominent among them are Shia and Sunnis. Mm. Now this conflict between Shia and Sunnis and their uh, desire to gain territories has been uh, capitalized upon by cold bloc nations, erstwhile mm. cold bloc nations, mm -hmm. that is USA and USSR. Mm. Now initially USA was, uh, had installed puppet regimes in countries like Libya, Egypt yeah. uh, and Syria, Saudi Arabia. True. Now when there was a rise by the people there for more uh, civil liberties mm -hmm. and uh, which, we, which is popularly known as Arab Spring, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, puppet regimes were uh, overthrown by the people there. Mm -hmm. Then USA changed its strategy in these regions uh, from being uh, installing puppet regimes to that of uh, in intervening in these regions on uh, pretext of using oil as a pretext. Okay. Wherein it wanted to preserve oil from mm -hmm. falling in hands of mm -hmm. radical Islamist uh, uh, groups. Okay. And I guess it's also utilizing media for its uh, support generation that we should now overthrow them. Yes. And somebody would come from the back and uh, capture their oil resources. Yes, Go certainly. Uh, this uh, geopolitical tussle in the Middle East, mm. especially between USA and USSR, mm. has uh, seen uh, Syria as a uh, war zone. Okay. And the primary reason for Syria being, uh, being the primary war zone is that Russia wants to enhance its sphere of influence towards East Europe, mm -hmm. but USA wants 
to contain the spread of Russia to East mm-hmm. Europe. Mm-hmm. Russia wants to control the supply of gas and oil pipelines mm-hmm. to East Europe, especially during winter yeah, months. Because that is its main source of revenue for mm-hmm. all its defense and all these engagements. Yes. Okay. So if Syria falls and subsequently other countries fall, mm-hmm. then East Europe would would uh, uh, agree eventually agree to mm-hmm. Russian terms mm-hmm. of uh, accessing Russian oil and gas. Mm-hmm. This would uh, be little uh, U.S. influence in the region, mm-hmm. and then if Europe uh, is goes away from uh, Russia, uh, mm-hmm. USA is uh, uh, this thing, mm-hmm. then uh, it's uh, it'll dent its uh, prospects of being a superpower up also. Mm-hmm. I would like to introduce one more dimension here that is ISIS. So ISIS has been uh, very much in news right now, and it has been one of the instrumentalities, mm-hmm. especially with respect to the terrorist propaganda. And I see it becoming an umbrella organization mm-hmm. after Al Qaeda and so many other groups joining ISIS, mm-hmm. and it being having uh, you know mm-hmm. not only the regional but also international approach. Uh, seeing France and so many other attacks going on, you know. Mm-hmm. So how do you see ISIS as a part of the situation? So the birth of ISIS uh, uh, can be taken back to. 1979 when Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Okay. Uh, USA uh, covertly uh, helped in the birth of Taliban there yes. with okay. help of ISI, I, ISI, Pakistan's ISI. Mm-hmm. Now, after when US realized that this is uh, fueling <coughs> terrorism against its own people, okay. especially after the 9/11 attack, mm-hmm. it uh, took uh, drastic measures such mm-hmm. as we know uh, invasion of Iraq. Yeah. On the next off, WMDs, weapons of mass destruction. And similar case for Afghanistan. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when the US invaded these nations, hmm. uh, the extremist groups there, the radicals there, they uh, uh, they took uh, shelter in different countries, hmm. and uh, eventually they made uh, their uh, stronghold in the uh, border areas of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Yes. Now they they capitalized on the Syrian uh, civil war there. Hmm. Now the rift between Shia and Sunni is hmm. the root cause of rise of ISI is there, hmm. and eventually these uh, radicals residing hmm. on the Swat Valley, Swat hmm. Valley between Afghan, they migrated to that region, hmm. and then they gave a call to uh, establish the Caliphate of Islam. Hmm. That the is, Syria army was also a part there. Yes, sir. Hmm. So uh, the uh, Sunnis there. Hmm. backed by saudi arabia mm. wanted to establish their own statehood there mm. and uh, uh, <clears throat> especially in the iraq and uh, syria region okay so this is how isi came to uh, rise okay. with a strong hold at in An- anbar province of iraq okay one more thing i'd like to add here is that whenever there is a human development index uh, lower count you know mostly in middle east west asia mm-hmm. and even now with the recent scene in xinjiang province you know the uigurs are more in yes. china so wherever i see that human development is lagging mm-hmm. it provides a fertile ground for the terrorists to breed their propaganda yes yeah because it's majorly a particular fundamentalist mm-hmm. ideology based upon which they would like to build their cadre yes, yes? yes. and that is the cadre that they would like to move forward with mm-hmm. and even we have seen youth migrating mm-hmm. from india to join iss and even from some developed mm-hmm. country they are coming into isis mm-hmm. so i guess this fundamentalist propaganda yes. so we have to be making sure that mm-hmm. development world over has to be inclusive mm, yes. even in the developed countries we have seen that there is some under development mm. you know a particular section of population will mm. still be missing out on this mm. and those will be the people who will join isis and that kind yes. of propaganda regime yeah. and uh, on these propaganda regimes i have seen that the bigger player will always capitalize mm. you know sometimes usa साइट्स रीजन फॉर इंटरवेंशन लाइक आइसिस उनके पास एक रीजन बन गया इसी तरह से इससे पहले सदाम हुसैन को रीजन बन गया तो उनके लिए तो ये एक अच्छा रीजन हो जाता है इंटरवेन करने का मिडल ईस्ट और वेस्ट एशिया में इंडिया की फॉरेन पॉलिसी के अंदर मैं इसके अंदर दो तीन प्रिंसिपल देखता हूँ कि इंडिया हमेशा चाहता होता है कि यू के जितने भी मेम्बर्स हैं वो हमेशा एक सोवरन डायमेंशन को लाइव रखें मतलब इंटरवेंशनल स्ट्रैटेजी ना हो एक सोवरेनिटी की स्ट्रैटेजी के ऊपर बिल्ड किया जाए बाकी कंट्रीज हेल्प जरूर करें सीरिया जैसे अभी आईसीएस की प्रॉब्लम वहां पे चल रही है या इराक में चल रही है तो बाकी कंट्रीज उनको हेल्प करें उस क्राइसिस से मर्ज करने की लेकिन एक जो नेटो एक्शन प्लान के तौर पर हम काम करना शुरू कर देते हैं वहां पर इंटरवीन करते हैं उनके इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी एक्सटर्नल सिक्योरिटी स्नारियोज में उस ट्रेड को इंडिया कभी सपोर्ट नहीं करता है है ना yes. तो इसीलिए हमने सीरिया से भी अभी तक अपना दूरी बनाए रखा है यस व्हाट अदर थिंग्स यू सी इन सीरिया इंडिया एंड द आउटफॉल ऑफ दिस मिडिल ईस्ट सिचुएशन एंड आइसिस अपॉन इंडिया 
with uh, this turmoil in uh, in uh, Middle East, mm. wherein there are many powers involved here, like USA, USSR, mm. ISIS, and the Kurds also. Mm. Uh, India, uh, Indian uh, 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 objectives of uh, sourcing oil from this region mm. has uh, been has been uh, pushed uh, into the uh, into dole rounds now. Okay. Now India finds it difficult to balance its relations between Iran. And Saudi Arabia, mm. both nations are important uh, sources of uh, mm. oil imports for Bilkul, India. Bilkul. So India has uh, 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 dawned upon a policy of uh, strategic engagement, mm. wherein it keep it, it's keeping a distance while mm. engaging proactively mm. on the economic front with these nations and mm. not militarily. Okay, so for example, अभी जो oil prices बहुत कम थे तो हमने जैसे बहुत सारी ऑयल मार्केटिंग कंपनीज ने यहाँ पे रिजर्व्स बनाना शुरू कर दिए एंड वो उनके लिए हम फ्यूचर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स भी साइन कर रहे हैं तो दोनों कंट्रीज के साथ ही वो हमारा एक इकोनॉमिक इंगेजमेंट है जो बहुत जरूरी है बिकॉज इन एनी केस फॉर डेवलपमेंट आई गेस एनर्जी इज दन ऑफ द गोल ड्राइवर है ना एंड फॉर द नेक्स्ट टेन टू ट्वेंटी ईयर्स इंडिया वुड नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट इट्स एनर्जी सिक्योरिटी इज वन ऑफ द कंसर्न एंड दैट इज मेट सेकेंड कंसर्न विच आई सी इज द यूथ प्रॉब्लम जैसे साइबर सिक्योरिटी का इशू है कि कुछ लोग यहाँ से वो यूट्यूब की वीडियोस देख के प्रभावित होकर उधर चले जाते हैं एंड मेनी पीपल फ्रॉम हैदराबाद एंड ऑल दे वर रेस्टेड बाय पुलिस ब्रॉट बैक टू द फैमिलीज सुप्रीम कोर्ट आल्सो सेड दैट दिस कैन बी यू नो दे शुड बी पेसिफाइड रादर दैन इम्प्रिजन येस बिकॉज इफ आइडियोलॉजिकल करेक्शन इज मेड आई गेस एवरी यूथ हु कैन कम बैक टू द मेन स्ट्रीम यू नो एंड रैर दैन डी स्ट्रीमिंग दैन थ्रू प्रिजन सिस्टम एंड ऑल दिस so that is also one dimension yes. i guess that should conclude certainly okay thank you so much